Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. As I promised, I am back to share my life in pictures. Who I am, how I got to where I am now. It all began with these two beautiful people, my parents. This is Senor Jose Crescencio Rodriguez Forteza, Eva Raquel Rodriguez. Yes, both of them were Rodriguez's. They met across their kitchen windows. I shared this with you earlier. They fell in love. My dad then went into uh, the Army, World War II. He fought in the Pacific. And then upon the completion of the war, he came back home. And my mother said, hey, are you going to propose or what? And he did. I believe it was in 1946 that they got married. And within a couple of years, in 49, this little chubby guy was born. And that is me. I can't believe it. Look at that. Of course, I am buck naked because it is hot in Puerto Rico. Let me tell you, and the best way to keep your child um, cool is to just let him take his clothes off. Let him run around. Sprinkle him a little bit. Here is my dad and I. He's my hero. Always has been and always will be. Even now, rest in peace, dad. He is helping me how to walk on a fence. Gosh. A little bit dangerous, but, you know, I have my dad to protect me. Here I am. I think I'm about maybe three years old, maybe four. I was always a little guy. There I am sporting my white cowboy boots. I don't know what I was thinking. Got a nice white suit going. And I think this is probably my Sunday best. I don't know where we were going, but I do have those pictures to uh, look back and reminisce. Here's my dad and I. We're in the back of our house. We had a big old uh, veranda in the back of the house looking down at our Spanish garden. I lived in my uncle's big old, I think it was like an 18-room mansion. He was very wealthy. We had the upper level, and my dad worked for my uncle. Here I am on my third or fourth birthday, I believe. I got a rocking horse for Christmas. My mom was giving birth to my sister right about that point, so I stayed a few days with my grandmother in Ponce, the south of the island, and that is Christmas morning. Here I am at a birthday party, looks like. I really don't remember who these kids are, maybe um, school kids, kindergarten possibly, but there I am, there's Joe. I always had my hair perfectly done, yes, my mom really took good care of me. I took up the piano around age seven. And uh, actually, they tell me I became so good, I was performing on TV in local places in Puerto Rico, in San Juan. Here I am, a little bit older, still doing my lessons. And then I took up drumming. This is me, my teenage years, at a neighbor's house. I took my drum set over there and started making all sorts of noise. I actually played with a couple of rock bands in high school. And we did a bunch of local gigs. Here I am as a teenage photographer. I am sporting my Weston handheld meter, by the way. And uh, check out that look and those glasses and the hair. I had more hair than I could uh, deserve at that point. Again, here I am in my backyard. These are all shot, of course, with a 35 millimeter on self-timer and... There's my uh, light meter. That thing always went with me everywhere I went. Here I am, a little bit older here. I'm about probably just before I went into the military in 1968. So I must have been maybe 19, 20. There's Joe with those Clark Kent glasses. They're back in fashion, I hear. This is me at a, at a shoot. I did a uh, coverage of the uh, Pebble Beach uh, tournament. We had um, some uh, wounded patients from the Vietnam era attend. They were um, invited to be their guests, and I went to shoot for the local newspaper. And so that's me. Here's me in boot camp. This is my first week of boot camp, Fort Ord, California, Monterey, 
Peninsula area, beautiful place. This is the crew of my newspaper that I work for, the Foghorn in San Francisco. There I am. These are the other cub reporters and editors. This is the information officer. This is my other editor. So I did all of their photography. And then I met my wife-to-be. Um, I saw her and I fell in love with her. She was my first date ever. I had never dated before. I had some interests on, you know, some high school girls, but I never really um, moved on to actual dating. I was too busy photographing and just enjoying family life. This is myself and my wife. Uh, we went to visit her parents. We weren't not married yet, so she took me home to meet the parents and I guess they approved. This is myself getting some sort of award. I think it was a Joint Service Commendation Medal. I work for the Inter-American Defense College here in Fort McNair, Washington, D.C. And it was a tri-service type organization. So at the end, I guess I did a good job and they gave me that medal, which was worth a few promotion points. All right, here I am just enjoying nightlife I'm out with my friends who were probably getting a little drunk. And uh, I think I was, what, all of 21 years old, maybe? That's in San Francisco, by the way. This is me and my wife-to-be. We're sneaking a little meat at the local hospital library where we would uh, meet whenever we had time. And somebody snuck up behind me and shot us like a gotcha-type photograph. This is uh, a shot I took for the newspaper showing my wife picking up the, uh, well, my wife-to-be. She's my wife now, of course. Picking up the morning mail to take to the clinic. These are the two uh, clerks at the post office. We did a lot of that type of shooting. Really simple stuff, nothing fancy. This is my paper dryer, my print dryer. Again, this is, you know, the old days. You did wet processing and then you laid the prints down on a conveyor and they were pressed against a heated drum and they emerged dry. That was the way we did things. Here's me at the little bench getting my camera ready to go out on a shoot. And so this is all in San Francisco. Then I went ahead and decided, what the heck, let's join the Special Forces. I came back from uh, uh, an assignment overseas and uh, I was assigned to the 10th Special Forces Group in Fort Devens, Massachusetts. And here we are outside in field maneuvers. Uh, this guy ended up getting killed later. Um, nothing to do with combat. It was a tragic automobile accident. Okay, and this is my future wife at that point. This is Janine. This is when we started dating. And being silly, I think we visited her parents and we were at a day camp that her mother ran. And she just wrapped herself up in a blanket and acted silly in front of the camera. That's my girl. Here she is being, I want to be alone mood, like the uh, movie star did back in the 40s. I forget who that was. Here's being very pensive and thoughtful behind the house. And again, these are just a bunch of snapshots of my life important people in my life. This is my wife-to-be. Check out the Kodak Instamatic camera. Oh my god, that was the camera to have back in the 70s. More pictures. Here's the tough guy. Look at how skinny I was, huh? Boy, what I would give to be that skinny again. Holy cow. This is in Puerto Rico. She stopped traffic when she was walking down San Juan. Yeah, that's my hot wife. Wow. I'm being attacked. Not really. Uh, this is in front of my dad's house, mom and dad's house in Puerto Rico, about four blocks away from the beach. So we had coconut palms in our front yard, a hammock. And uh, it was paradise there, let me tell you. 
So there you go, huh? Every time I got home, she would open the door and greet me. Hey, what more can you ask for? Look at her. This is Judy, the baby Judy. She is driving her nuts, wearing her out. I would get home from work and I would take over and give her a break. Look at that look. And Judy would act like a little saint. This is mom, dad, and baby Judy. This is the night before I left for Korea. And uh, I may look like I'm smiling, but inside I'm really crying. I didn't want to give that up for a whole year. But um, it was an adventure. This is me in Korea. I basically worked out of a Quonset hut. I had a photo lab and sleeping quarters, little shooting studio office. And I basically stayed there 24 seven unless I was getting a haircut or eating chow at the chow hall. This is me in my little office. Not much to see there. This is me outside, outside the hut. And we went out on missions. We went out on uh, a lot of um, helicopter flights. We do a lot of aerial photography. We went up to the uh, uh, many uh, mountain type uh, radio towers in uh, little little uh, radio um, microwave centers back in those days. They would have about maybe 12 soldiers working on the top of a mountain doing communications. I was with the strategic uh, command there and so that's what we did. And that was a lot of fun flying around all of South Korea. Here I am in the uh, hut again. That's me. I got promoted to sergeant, so at least I was making a few more dollars to send to the family. Here I am with my partner. This is the guy that I work with. He lived in the barracks. I got to stay here because I was an NCO, so I got to stay in my own little quarters. No one to bother me. Here I am in the studio. I got a customer here who I don't know what he wanted, but got a big old tripod here and uh, some lights. Yep, that, that was the time when everything was done by hand. You set it all up by hand and tore it down every time you were done and have to reset it up again. This is me listening to the radio. We did not have any local radio. We had Armed Forces radio to listen to. So, And the music was about 10, 15 years back in time. Nothing modern. This is the week before I came back home. I decided to put on my khaki uniform which does not exist anymore. They don't use this uniform any longer and took a nice little tour of the local town. I was stationed in Tegu. Tegu is in the middle of South Korea and it was the third largest city in the whole peninsula. This is what I was coming back home to. So, you know, who can blame me? I could not wait. Here's my Judy. This is out of order. Excuse that. Uh, Judy greeting me at the door. She did that. She still does. This is mom and Judy. Snowy day. And all of this time I'm working in photography, uh, mostly in different types of photo labs, doing what we used to call grip and grins, basically award ceremonies, going out to the field with the soldiers, doing the maneuvers, and basically covering everything. When I did work for the newspaper in San Francisco, I did a lot of work with celebrities from Hollywood. And so that was a lot more fun than the regular drudge type work, which is basically a lot of military type related stuff. I did a lot of copy work. This is Judy, by the way, on her little horse. I did a lot of copy reproduction work, learned how to do that. I did some uh, four color printing. My secondary specialty became uh, lithography. So. I did that for about maybe 10 years and I still had that uh, secondary MOS when I retired. So here is my wife at a flea market. This is baby Judy on a little tricycle and uh, she had long hair back then. I wish she would let her hair grow back but shh, don't tell her. 
This is myself. I'm now on my third year with the Special Forces. Look at the kind of shape they put me in. I used to run daily five to six miles a day wearing a backpack with about 50 pounds in it. That was the standard thing that we had to do. And I had to compete with the rest of the guys because they were in much better shape than I was. So there was no way for you to, to take some slack and not keep yourself in shape because every six months you got tested. So here I am with Janine, baby Judy. She's now a bigger girl. I think I have my fatigues on, my boots, and regular t-shirt on. This was my uniform. Once I take my top off, that's what I stayed on at the house. I never really changed. And guess what? Janice was born. This is after I came back from Korea. And yes, almost immediately, my wife became pregnant. I wonder why. And baby Janice was born. And look at that girl. That's Judy. <laughs> wow. I should show that to Nathan. So here is mom with baby Janice. And we're getting close to the end here, folks. This is my dad, rest in peace, dad, with his princess, Janice. This girl became his princess. He treated her like a queen, I swear. And um, he never had the opportunity to, to meet with Judy when she was a little baby like that. So he used to carry her through the neighborhood in a big fluffy pillow, like she was some sort of a little statue, and show her to the neighbor ladies. Oh my God, I'm getting attacked again. Yeah, my wife does love me. What can I say? I don't know why. I don't know why she puts up with me, but there you go. And again, these are all pretty priceless to me. Oh wow, this is in Puerto Rico, my mom's house. Like I said, we live four blocks from the beach and uh, it's hot. So I'm walking around bare chested. I actually had a six pack, wow. If I could only get in that kind of shape again, I'm 68 in about another couple of months in September. I should try, huh? This is my wife having fun with the kids, little wading pools in the backyard. And again, I assume it is a very hot day. And uh, yep, looks like fun. Uh, my mother, Judy. And Janice and I actually have a picture of my grandmother also my dad's mother with the three generations actually with Jeremy as well here is my mom's mom so this is my grandmother Janice's great-grandmother and uh, that's the first time she saw her this is in Puerto Rico this is uh, Judy she had actually burned her hand in a really, really a freak little accident. And after the whole ordeal, I took her to the carnival and she's on her little carousel horse and she's looking at dad. I want you to look at that look. She's looking at dad with love in her eyes. She still uses that look to get whatever she wants. She's 44, by the way. I let her get away with it. Why not? Here's Judy, daddy, and Janice. Don't worry, folks, we're near the end here. Okay, those cuddly sisters, I wish they would do that still, but they really do not. They are two completely different characters. I actually match Janice a lot more in character than I do Judy. Judy is my baby, and she gets whatever she wants, but Janice and I are like that. It's amazing how similar we are. Judy, Janice, being silly, and by the way, have you noticed how neutral these prints are? 3880 OEM ink, Canon Pro Luster paper, amazing. Here's my hot wife and baby Janice with a little hoodie on and looking cute as ever. Man, those are the memories. Ah, uh, sled time. This is in Massachusetts. It did snow a lot there. We are getting closer. Oh, look at that. Everybody being serious. Joe acting normal. Yeah, what a goof. And what about that shirt? Where in the world did you get that shirt? Holy cow. And the mustache. Wow. 
Janice, see? I told you she was serious. Okay, this is in Belgium. And I think the girls are ready to be picked up by the school bus to go to the international school at the Supreme Headquarters Allied Powers Europe in Maziers, Belgium. Very close to Brussels. And this is one of the last trips. In fact, I think it was the last trip my dad, look at that man, handsome as hell, made to Maryland when my last station, or uh, my last few years in the military before I retired in Maryland. And um, this is my wife, Janine, Judy, Janice, my mother. And they came for about a week's visit and we were able to put them up in the house. We had a fairly big four bedroom house we lived in. And so that's the last time that I saw my dad here in Maryland. The last few times then they moved to Florida in 1990. So from then on, I used to visit them down there. Judy, Janice, Jeremy, the boy is getting bigger. See, this is the, the one that's 34 now. And uh, here is Janice abusing her brother. Well, actually, not really. He was enjoying it. And let's see, one more and then one more. The girls made a, a train made out of crackers, I believe, for his birthday. They glued it together with frosting. Hmm. So here they are, <laughs> very cute. And last but not least, this is their school picture. Here's Jeremy, he's already in high school. Judy is out of college already. And uh, I don't know what Janice was doing. She was probably also out of uh, high school as well. Again, remember these two are 10 years apart and I can't even remember those dates. So anyway, that is it. I hope you enjoy this. Let me tell you what happened to me when I was in Puerto Rico and I was about nine years old. I had the opportunity to look at some pictures of my cousin's wedding. They had gone back to Spain, had a huge wedding. It was kind of an arranged marriage. It didn't turn out well. And I looked at those photographs and I was just blown away. And this is a nine year old kid. And the realization of these prints, they were silver prints, coming from negatives, rather large negatives too. I could not comprehend how that worked. The photographer who was a Spaniard that lived up the street from us actually took me to his uh, apartment and showed me basically how it occurred, how the process took place. And then he told me to do a lot of reading. Well, I had no other source but an encyclopedia, and this was in Spanish. So basically, I looked up the Fotografía section under F and read up on the photographic process and the evolution of photography. And again, remember, I was 9, 10 years old. So about age 11, I begged my dad until the point where he bought me a little enlarger. And this is a really super primitive and larger. So we had a little walk-in closet that I set up as a darkroom. And that's how it all began. From that point on, I was able to get a very uh, rudimentary 35 millimeter camera. You gotta realize this was 1960-ish, 61 around there. And so that's what I used to practice on. And I had a plastic developing tank for film. And then I went into the closet and develop my film and after drawing I made attempts at printing and from that point on that's how it, it all began and so then I had the itch to move to the mainland United States finally my parents sent me to live to California with my grandmother my uncle my aunts my cousins everybody was in that house and in junior high school I had an English teacher he was a Mexican man Mr. Hernandez, and he held an after-school photography club. Oh my God, that was my dream come true. And he introduced me to the Exacta camera because that's what he used. And that's how I became hooked with these types of cameras. And after that, it's just a matter of evolution. I did it day and night. I also did my schoolwork. You know, photography was my passion at that point. So 
Then I went to high school, then I went to junior college, a local uh, community college, and I got drafted in 68 into the Army. So in the Army, I originally was a field medic, a combat medic, and then I took a um, test and I was able to qualify to go to a more advanced medical type school, which made me into an occupational therapy technician. That's when I went to San Francisco and met my wife at the Presidio San Francisco at the Letterman General Army Hospital. And from that point on, my uh, commanding officer saw that I had skills in photography and with a stroke of a pen, he transferred me from occupational therapy technician specialty to still photography specialty. Boom, done. Next thing you know, I'm working for the newspaper and have my own photo lab to handle. And so at that point, I then left the Army, came back into the Army, and never left it until 22 years later. And then I retired here in Washington and continued, continued, continued doing my photography. And now, uh, after having printed in the darkroom for so many years, I began to get the printing bug using the digital process. It was awful back then, and it wasn't until now that finally we can say that we can produce uh, basically probably better photographs, final photographs that we could do in the darkened process, although there are certain qualities that I still prefer about darkened prints. That is it. I hope I did not bore you to death. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please let me know because I have other stories that I want to share with you guys if you allow me to do so. Thank you once again. Please share, subscribe, and like. And until the next time, happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.